So you say, okay, Dr. Jeff, you took the easy way out. That's vein blood clots in the legs. What about in the lungs? Same story. This is the pill versus however you want to treat a blood clot in the lungs, either through an IV, heparin with Coumadin, or a shots of Lovenox with Coumadin. Similar event rates, recurrent blood clots. Similar bleeding risk. This data is really good. Thousands of patients, randomized, multiple centers all over the place, highest levels of science. Major bleeding actually occurred less often with the new pill than standard therapy, statistically lower. So I think this is a game changer, folks. First time in 60 years we have something to talk about other than Coumadin. Now, there's got to be a hitch, right? In medicine, nothing's 100%. No way. That's why we can't list every risk factor. We can't say every problem that can occur. What's the hitch? So the benefits of this medication, wide therapeutic margin means you only take this pill once a day. You don't have to do it more often. There are very few food and drug interactions. So although there are some drug interactions, they're very uncommon. They're not usually with medications that you take regularly. And the food interactions are even less common. So all that stuff about green leafy vegetables and liver and all that stuff, you don't have to worry about with this. I know, see, it's unbelievable. But look at this one. You don't have to go get INR tests. See, I'm telling you, I, she needs to be in my corner right here. She's, she's just gasping with excitement over this. It's phenomenal. You don't have to go and get INR tests. This dose is so predictable in thousands and thousands of patients tested that we know it thins the blood. These are huge changes in quality of life for our patients. But where's the downside? We can't monitor whether you're on exactly the right amount or not. Now, most of the time, it works perfectly, but nothing in medicine is 100%. It's very hard right now to measure the impact of this medication on blood thinning, OK? It's not like I just send you to the lab to get an INR and I know, or stick your finger, and I know in a matter of seconds where your blood thinning is. We don't actually have this INR of 2 to 3 with this new medication. There is no such thing. Here's the big one. If, God forbid, you're on Coumadin, and you come into Dr. Ansel or me in our emergency room, and you're bleeding, we can reverse the effects of Coumadin literally within an hour. You're out of trouble. That is not the case with these medications. We don't have a rapidly effective therapy to reverse the impact of these medications. So that's worrisome, right? If you start bleeding, and you're on one of these, it's a concern. Now, we, we think we know what to do in the event that this happens. There are, it's not like we're going to stand there and say, sorry, you're out of luck. There's nothing we can do. <laughs> I mean, there are things we do. It's just not as reliable as we know what to do with Coumadin. Now, the good news is just this past week, there's an antidote that's been going through phase two trials in the, in the United States that's actually performing very well. And I suspect within the next couple of years, That'll be available in the United States. It is available overseas. So the hope for this is going to change. It's going to come around. But right now, today, that antidote's not available. So management of bleeding is a, is a problem. And of course, we've been using Coumadin now for 60 plus years. We know exactly everything about that medicine there is to know. These medicines, not the case, right? They're just out in use over the past several years around the world and within the last year here. And then the last piece of bad news. Sorry, guys. How much is generic Coumadin? I mean, it's pennies on the dollar. It's one of the cheapest medications we prescribe. This one, big time, big time expensive. Hundreds of times the cost of Coumadin. Now, when it first came out late last year, many private insurance plans would not cover this. So we couldn't use it just because the, I mean, it's hard to pay for it out of your pocket. A lot of plans over the past six to eight months have started to accept this. So if, God forbid, you need this or you're going to talk to your doctor about it, just call your insurance plan and ask them. It's becoming much more 
approved by uh, plans because of the reasons that I've shown you. So here's my, here's my kind of simple endpoint for this. Why should a patient not switch from Coumadin today? You've been on Coumadin a long time. You're doing fine. Why should you not switch to this new medication? Here's my gestalt. You tell me which one of these is true based on what I told you. This is a, this is a multiple choice question. Warfarin's easier to take. Is that true or false? False, right? I told you it's miserable to take. So that's not the right answer. Rivaroxaban is more expensive, right? I told you it's a lot more expensive. But that's not a reason to switch. It's easier to reverse the effects of rivaroxaban than warfarin. That's false, right? I told you we don't know yet how to reverse this. There are more food and drug interactions with rivaroxaban than warfarin. That's not true. And warfarin's more effective in preventing blood clots than rivaroxaban. That's also not true. So this is the reason you shouldn't switch, for sure. It is so much more expensive that if you're doing fine on Coumadin and you've got your life together on it, it's not worth the cost, I don't think, until the cost starts coming down. So here's my personal view. And I, if I see somebody with DVT and I'm thinking about rivaroxaban versus my usual way, this is why I wouldn't just put somebody on rivaroxaban. A big blood clot in the leg or a blood clot up into the pelvis, I'm going to bring them in the hospital, see how things are going. I'm not just going to send somebody home. We don't really know how effective this medication is in people with cancer or cancer in chemotherapy. It's probably OK, but we don't know. I know exactly how to take care of people with cancer-related blood clots. I don't use warfarin in those people either. I use one of these other injectable medications. So I'm not switching yet on that. And all sorts of other things, like kidney problems. If you have kidney problems, this particular medication is metabolized largely through the kidneys. So it can cause a real problem. You can end up with too much rivaroxaban and more bleeding. So I don't use it in people like that. Same thing for pulmonary embolus. If somebody is really sick, very short of breath, their blood pressure is a little low, I've got to have them on oxygen, I'm not just going to give them the pill. I'm going to bring them in the hospital. I'm going to make sure I know what I'm doing. I'm going to make sure they're doing well. I'm not just going to give them a pill and send them home. Same thing for all these other reasons. 